Hello and welcome to project six. In this project we're going to make a hexagon kite and what you're seeing in the background is the Taiwan Kite Festival in 2017 and these are very contemporary kites. Um, they're very complicated. They use nylon. We're going to stick with paper but I just wanted you to see what um, is happening in the contemporary world of kite making. We're going to look at some examples from um, to uh, different countries in kite making. And as we continue with these lessons, you'll see examples from other people and cultures from around the world. So we're gonna start with a video about Grenada, which has a um, kite flying tradition that happens on the Christian holiday of Good Friday. And in that, island they uh, celebrate that day by going out with the family and flying kites. <laughs> My name is Akeem, Grenadian urban reggae artist, and I'm gonna talk to you a little something about kites. Right here I have in my hand this masterpiece that I created myself. This is the most common Grenadian five flex kite, right? And I call it a five flex kite because you use five pieces of sticks to make it. One, two, three, four, and I add a nose bridge on top of it and make it five, right? We had quarantine point and it is tradition in Grenada that on Good Friday, which is today, that you fly kites. You know, everybody you come out and you go to your family, your children, you take your kids out, you make a little kite and you pack a little picnic and see some people barbecue and all kind of thing over there. So all kind of nice vibes and fun thing. And you know, just come down and fly like a kite and enjoy some nice sun and, and breeze and relax. Yeah, Grenada, pure Grenada. Every year we come right here at this spot, the fly kite. That's like a family, an annual family, family outing. My whole family, my wife, my kids, my friends, my sister in the car. Day. That's my nephew, that's my daughter. The whole squad. Guatemala also has a kite tradition in which they fly large kites during Day of the Dead. So now I'm going to show you how to make a kite and what you're going to need is a paper, a scissors, glue, a ruler, a pen, the bamboo mat, and some string. The first thing you need to do is to take the bamboo mat and cut out three of the sticks. If you're using um, something else like sticks that you got from your yard or bamboo, just make sure you have three of them. You want them to be about a foot long each and as straight as possible. So then you're going to get some string uh, so that you can tie those three sticks together at the center point. You might even want to measure them and put a dot in the middle just so that you can uh, try to get that string tied around them at the most center point on the sticks.
So now you're going to spread them out, uh, trying to get them at equal distance from each other, and you're going to wrap the string around that joint. And what I've done a poor job of doing is keeping my hands in front of the camera, but I'm wrapping it in all different directions, trying to bind them together, but also bind them in a way that make, forces them to stay spread out. And then I tie the string to the uh, little end that was left over. I did not put a dot of glue uh, on this when I was done, but you can do so like we did with the other kite if um, it'll help keep the knot from unraveling and also to help to reinforce that joint. So now that we have our spines laid out, we're going to use string much like we did before to uh, create a sort of perimeter that we'll use when we attach the paper. And I'm measuring out about five feet of string to do this. And each one of those sticks is a foot long, so I can just use it as my ruler. So I tie the first, um, tie the end to the first stick. I try to get it as close to the end as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it fairly close. And then notice how I measure it to the center, and that just is a nice tool that I saw many other kite makers doing, um, where if you just measure it from the end to the connection point, um, you get a equal distance that helps you maintain as much sort of equal distance between each of the sticks as possible. So then I wrap it tightly around several times, and then I measure it again and wrap it to the next end using that measurement as a point for starting the wrapping. And when I get to the last end, I can just tie it to that little leftover end there. If it's difficult, you can even wrap it around the end a couple times just to secure it and then tie it to the knot. And that last one should be fairly taut so that that string that goes around um, the kite spines is somewhat firm or somewhat taut so that you um, nothing's kind of loose and you have a nice sturdy uh, base for your kite. Then you take your paper that you've chosen to do this uh, kite with. You might need to make more, decorate more paper, or use what you have. Or if you have also decorative papers, you're welcome to use them. And just much like before, we're going to lay our kite on the paper and put a dot at the end of the, each stick. Next, we'll take a ruler and connect those dots to create the perimeter of our kite. This will be um, what we use to guide us when we cut it out, and also it will be where we f make our folds uh, to fold around the strings to hold it onto the kite.
So when we cut this out, we don't want to cut on the line because that would be the exact size of the kite and wouldn't give us anything to fold around the string. So we're cutting about a half an inch outside of the line. once we finish that, you're actually going to see me cut away the corners. That's so that when I fold it, those corners don't bunch up um, and become bulky. This paper is really thin and the glue helps to um, make it kind of uh, pliable or moldable. So if you do have overlapping, it's not a big deal. But this is just a trick, um, a pattern making trick to help um, it fold around points much easier. And then I'm going to try to figure out, because my kite's not perfect. Um, there, you know, some triangles are a little bit smaller than others. So I'm trying to match it up to figure out exactly which um, side that it was. And then I go ahead and fold on each of those lines. And it's kind of funny because now I can't figure out which <laughs> way I had my kite before. And I have to try many times um, flipping it around till I figure out what is the best um, way to put that spine in there to be glued. And if you'll notice, one of my triangles is specifically smaller and I had a hard time figuring out how it, which, which one it would be best in. But honestly, in the end, I kind of found out that, you know, it's paper and it's really pliable. So it kind of didn't matter because um, as long as I, you know, kept it in there firmly, I could kind of go back in and trim or just kind of mold the paper how I needed it to, to fit this design. I think what I found in the end is just the spines kind of shifted a little bit in the process. So my pattern did not stay true to the kite, but it all worked out fine. So it's not something you don't need to spend as much time as I did just trying to figure out the perfect fit. So then I get my glue and you can really use um, the glue that I sent you, which is that glue in the green tube. You can also use a glue stick would work fine. If you made your own paste, that'll work. Um, really any of the glues, although the pastes work much better than something like white glue or Elmer's glue because Elmer's glue is a little bit wet for this kind of um, project. So if you have a, something that's more of a paste or a glue stick, use that. But, you know, in the end, make do with what you got. If you've got Elmer's glue, it'll work. And if you have don't have that, try tape. Tape would be heavy. You wouldn't want to use a normal kite. It also would probably come apart. This glue that we're using um, in the tube is very strong. It's a cellulose based glue um, and it's very sticky so it works really well. And so I'm just gluing each of the tabs 
and it's not folding you know this if you notice the string isn't perfectly in the corner so my you can see that this string is a, down a little bit um, further than the edge of the kite which is fine it's still doing its job it's still supporting that paper it's still creating tension and sort of a nice surface so that if you were to fly this it has all the support and resistance it needs to pick up wind And there you go. You have a hexagonal kite. You can decorate this or do whatever you like, add the tail if you want. Um, but I'm going to show you a, another way to make it much more colorful or more designed as like some of the kites that you saw. So if you wanted to do a more colorful kite, I actually um, have a piece of tissue paper that I'm using in this, but you can use scraps of any kind of paper, really. The lighter and the you know, thinner, more tissue-like, the better. Uh, I would recommend using the paper that I sent you or that you got in your kits. Um, that is the strongest and thinnest. Uh, but there's a lot of... Um, experimentation you can do so don't be held back by what you have um, or about what you don't have um, so in this case I'm gluing a couple of pieces together and basically collaging them together or attaching them I'm sorry once again that I am a bit off camera when I do this but I'm running glue just down the side of the paper so that it will stick to the paper next to it I'm gonna make like a checkerboard essentially so all four of those pieces will be glued together much how you see them laid out there and that will allow me to have a base for my kite um, that is m colorful and sort of has um, differences and you saw in I think you saw in the videos that there were like star patterns you could glue a bunch of triangles together um, one video I saw even someone had cut out that hexagonal shape and then went back in and cut out diamonds and then glued in more paper um, so the more you do to it the more colorful and vibrant it will be um, so employ those uh, collage skills that you got at the beginning um, to try to make something that is a little bit more um, graphically interesting or colorful um, and it will make for a more interesting kite. So now you're going to see I've speeded up a little bit. This is the same process as before um, where you make the dots and you connect the lines And then you cut it out again, leaving a half inch, if you have it. On this one, I got a little bit small, so I didn't have a half inch on all of it, but I still was able to make it work. Uh, and now I have um, a new pattern that I can use for my kite. And what I'm doing um, off the camera there a little bit is just cutting out a snowflake. So I just used some of my scrap. Um, this is kind of like the guy's kite that you saw in the first video. He had these little snowflakes on the side. He even had them kind of hanging off the edge, which was really nice. Um, but I'm just doing that to add an extra design. Um, and this paper collages to itself very, very nicely. So if you just use that glue and you kind of spread paste over the back of it it um, 
and get a nice even coat, it will collage really, really nicely to the top of the kite paper. You can do all kinds of designs. You can just even tear paper and collage it on top. You can make a star. Um, try to use your imagination and just figure out some sort of technique that will give you a really interesting skin for your kite. And there you have it. That is um, our hexagonal kite with a little bit more color um, to it. All right, for Studio Six, um, Studio Art Project Number Six, create a hexagonal kite. Um, and make sure that you upload it to Schoology, or I'm sorry, upload it to our website or Schoology. You can use Schoology if you're having problems with the website, or you can even email your results to me if both are being difficult for you. Um, remember that all the assignments are in Schoology, as well as links to the videos. And um, feel free to reach out with any questions. You need to upload this by your class time next Monday. I also want to let you know um, that I know a lot of you are just getting overloaded with work. So if you have any difficulties, if you can't submit in time, um, if you're dealing with a backlog of work, just reach out to me. Send me an email and let me know so that we can figure out a plan for you that will work. I don't want you to stress out. I want this, I want you to be creative for hopefully more than two hours, but at least two hours every week. But I also understand that you're under a lot of stress right now. So the best plan of action is just to communicate with me so we can make a doable plan for you. Um, so it was great talking to all of you individually. And um, I really appreciate and enjoyed our conversations. And um, just don't forget to stay in touch and let me know if there are any things that arise that you need help with or if you need some kind of reduction in work. I hope you have fun with this project and I'm looking forward to seeing what you make.